faith. Hey man, I am so pumped to have you guys join us today. Hey, my name is Stu and get this, right now I'm coming to you from the Kids of Faith studio and this gets me really, really excited. And you know what else gets me excited? Yes, uh, Flaming Hot Cheetos and Dr. Pepper gets me really excited, but also road trips. I love going to a new place and experiencing the sights and the sounds of that new place. Hey, do me a favor and share with the person next to you your favorite road trip story, like your favorite road trip story that you've ever been on. Go ahead and do that right now. And as you do that, I'm gonna keep on talking. So if you have to hit pause, go ahead and hit pause. But one of my favorite road trips of all time was this one time when I took a group of my friends down the Pecos River. So we had to travel a long distance to get to the river. And this river is right on the Texas-Mexico border. And I want you to picture it with me. There are some massive bluffs, stone bluffs on either side of this river. And in the river, it is a crystal clear stream. It is Beautiful. And on this trip, we kayaked 20 miles. We jumped off of 40 foot cliffs. Um, some of us fell out of our kayaks in the middle of the rapids. We even had to go to the bathroom in the woods. Don't tell anybody that, but we did. And, and, and get this, the craziest part though was when I was paddling one time on that trip. I was paddling and this giant massive alligator gar, it's a, think of a gnarly fish with the head of an alligator, jumps into my kayak on my leg, flapping around. And what did I do? Well, I screamed and I flailed my arms all over the place. But regardless, even though that happened, it's still one of my favorite road trips of all time. Now this month, what we're doing is we're looking at one guy's road trip to a mountain. And this road trip is found in the Old Testament and the guy's name is Moses. If you've been around Faith Church much, you've probably heard us talk about him. He's the guy who was raised in Pharaoh's palace in Egypt. And eventually, God uses Moses to free the Israelites from slavery using all these different plagues. And at this point in the story, Moses is going on a long road trip with the freed Israelites. And along the road, they stop at this big mountain, this mountain called Mount Sinai. And on this mountain, uh, Moses, he meets with God and God gives Moses a set of 10 commandments, or think 10 rules. Now last week, Jake talked about the first two rules. Rule number one was no other God before me. Rule number two, hey, no idols. You can't have any fake idols. And this week, we're gonna look at rule number three, and it's don't misuse God's name. And also rule four, which is keep the Sabbath day holy. In fact, we're gonna have um, our buddies Carl and TJ, they're gonna talk about those two commandments right now. Hey Carl, go ahead and take it away. Hi there, you little chicken nuggets, and welcome to Grow TV. Are y'all ready to have your minds blown right now? Do you have any idea what this is? Oh, is it a weird kite or some sort of ancient artifact? <laughs> no! What I'm holding right now is what we in the industry like to call a loaf of bread, or bread for short. Now, you may use this for sandwiches, but that's all that bread can be used for, right? Wrong! Get ready, because it's about to get crazy. I'm now going to show you every single use for a piece of bread. And I mean every single use. Let's go! Writing letters. Dear Susan, if you're reading this, <laughs> I miss you. Please come back. I had no idea those were your Pop-Tarts. Sincerely, with love, and grace, and humility. With more love, Carl. <laughs> a mask. A toupee. I have bread for her hair. A deck of cards. Go fish. Hit me. Check. Tape. Kleenexes. A phone. Well, you can tell the mayor that I love him. And I think he's a swell guy. A shoulder to cry on. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. Thank you for being here, Brad. A frisbee. Someone to tell you that they're proud of you. I'm proud of you, son. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I mean, Brad. Brad, Dad. <laughs> this is truly incredible. Who knew that bread could be used and done in so many different ways? Oh. Yellow. 
Hello? Hello? Oh. DJ! I thought you were calling me on my bread phone. Hey, Carl. Wait. What? My bread phone. It's a long story. But man, do you have any idea what this is? Bread? Eh, wrong. It's not just bread. It can be anything you want it to be. Okay. All right, you don't believe me. Here's what we'll do. Name one thing in the world. One, one thing? Like anything? Anything. Um, okay. Um, I guess monster truck? All right. Ready for this? At this point, I have no idea. So, uh, sure. Sure. Ta-da! I say ta-da! It's still a piece of bread. No way. Watch. <sighs> Watch out for the Hansel and Gretel. <sighs> this truck is leaving breadcrumbs in his path in absolute carnage. Watch out. He's leaving his opponents pretty sour. Sourdough, that is. <sighs> okay, Carl, I'm going to ask you something. I want you to be completely honest with me, okay? Okay. Um, are you okay? <laughs> DJ, I'm fine. You sure? Yes, really. I'm just excited because today is the day I realized bread can have so many uses. And bread can mean many different things. Oh, okay, okay. I, I guess I can get that. I get that. You know, there's a lot of things like that. What? Like paper towels. Like, some people use them to um, dry their hands, uh, clean up messes, or how you can use milk for cereal. But then again, you can also turn around and use that same milk to feed a baby cow. I can't believe I never thought of that. Or even like worship. What do you mean? There are a lot of different ways to worship God. You lost me. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, let's talk about the commandments. All right. Which ones? The third and fourth commandment. All right. Number three. You shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. What does that mean? Well, taking a name in vain means to use it without being kind or not having respect for that name in the first place. So misusing God's name is a very bad thing. Good to know. Kids, don't ever use God's name for a bad word. Yeah, but there's more. How so? Have you ever prayed to God for something you wanted? Yes, of course. I talk to God all the time. Even that one time I was stuck in a den of raccoons. <laughs> That's great, man. I love talking to God too. But one thing we have to remember is that God is not our magic genie that grants us every wish we want. Of course not. That's silly. God is way cooler and God gives us way more good things already than three lousy wishes. But sometimes we forget that it's our job to obey God and not the other way around. So when we pray to God and demand things from God, that's one way we can misuse God's name. Whoa, I never thought about that. That's real deep. Okay, so moving on to commandment number four. Remember to keep the Sabbath holy. What does that mean? Well, the Sabbath was a time of rest, a break from work, in order to focus on and to remember all that God has done for us. And holy means to set apart. So that commandment means we are to take a day, set it apart from the other days, rest, and focus on God. Oh, kind of like how God created the world in six days, but rested on the seventh day? That's exactly right, man. Wow, I'm learning so much. But what does this have to do with singing in the church? Well, what do you mean? Well, this whole conversation started off by you mentioning worship. Oh, okay, I understand what you're saying. Well, you see, Worshiping God is not only singing in church. Say what now? Really? It's more than that. Worship is anything that we do that gives God glory and praise. So like when I pray and spend quiet time with God, that's worship? Sure is. What about when I serve others? Absolutely. Wow. And God loves when we worship, right? Sure thing. And we all have to remember, we obey God by worshiping God. TJ, I can't believe you. What? What? What, what? what did I say? You just said our big idea! Today's big idea is we obey God by worshiping God. Oh, that's right. So let's say it together on the count of three. Y'all ready? One, two, three. We, we obey, obey God, God by worshiping God! God. Good job, everyone. <laughs> TJ, I gotta say, this whole worship thing has really changed my whole perspective on everything I do. I'm glad, man. But listen, I'm not gonna lie, you had me a little bit worried with the whole bread thing. <laughs> that was <you're> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was crazy. 
<laughs> it sure was. I was all like, wait till this guy sees what happens when you put bread in a toaster. <laughs> what? What happens? <laughs> oh, oh, um, nothing. Nothing, buddy. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh... Oh, I gotta see this. See you, TJ. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Hey, Carl, where are you going, man? You, you're in the middle of the road. Uh... Ah, kids, we'll see you guys next week. Hey, thanks, Carl and TJ. Hey, both of these commandments help us remember that we can worship God in so many different ways. By singing or dancing or praying or respecting God or reading the Bible or obeying what God says. And of course, taking a day to slow down go to church and rest. Think about this question. Have you worshiped God in any of these ways lately? Like this week, we want to challenge you to think of new ways to worship God. Maybe you can worship God with your words, or maybe you can worship God with your actions, or, or maybe you can worship God through prayer. Why do this? Well, because we believe that we can obey God by worshiping God. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks for joining us. Again, my name is Stu. Peace.